I don't understand, Yuri. There's a lot of things I don't understand. But yet, if the economy is doing so well, why do we need a rate cut or more than a one rate cut? You know, it's, it's an interesting uh, observation because if you look at, for instance, the output gap, right? So the, the difference between actual GDP growth and potential growth, back at the, during the financial crisis, that gap was minus 5.8%. So very, very large gap. It took years and years and years to close it. But now it's been closed, so now the gap is plus 0.8, and it's rising steadily. And yet here is the Fed about to conduct, you know, one or maybe several uh, sort of insurance cuts. And the only other times in history that I can tell uh, that this happened was actually the 95 cycle and the 98 cycle. And you and I have talked about these cycles in the past. But those were basically cycle extenders, right? They extended the business cycle. They, they breathed fresh air into a, an otherwise kind of maturing bull mm -hmm. market. And things kept going. And so my default assumption is that this is what's happening again. And I think the... Um, the, the motivation for the rate cuts is mostly on the inflation side, not on the growth side. Um, and I think that's kind of what the rationale is. Uh, I was going to say, because you I, said you're I, and you said insurance cut. I'm just thinking insurance against what? Do we think the car is going to crash? Uh, so if you look at uh, the, the so-called natural rate or the equilibrium rate, which is something that the Fed has in its model, um, it, it looks like that's starting to falter a little bit. And so when you have the, the neutral rate, right, the, the rate at which the Fed sets its benchmark policy rate, if that rate is starting to kind of ease off and at the same time inflation is running well below the Fed's 2 percent target, you put those two things together and maybe they're like, you know, maybe we should have, shouldn't have gone in December in the first place. So now maybe we take that December hike back and maybe we do another cut just as a way to kind of better to do some now than to have to chase this thing later. And so I, I do understand the, 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 whole, the whole premise that, that the Fed's in. Is the stock market dangerously addicted to Fed stimulus? Or can it stand on its own, um, Urian? Um, I think so, but it depends on the interplay of the, the numerator and the denominator of the of the discounted cash flow model. Not not to sound overly nerdy here, but but you have earnings growth drive, of course, the market in a very big way, but the cost of capital does as well. So if earnings growth is slowing as it is now, right, we're just in the, in the, at the beginning of earnings season, and so far we're looking at maybe flat growth after a first quarter with also flat growth, when that numerator of that formula starts to uh, falter, you need the, the denominator side to kind of pick up the slack, and that would be through uh, a, a Fed that's cutting. Uh, but if, if earnings growth is, is rising, you know, strongly at, let's say, 5 or 10 percent, you don't really need the Fed. But it's really the interplay of those two, and, um, and right now they're kind of balancing each other out right as the S&P is trading at 3,000, but at a fairly lofty forward multiple of about 17.3 times next year's earnings. And you think earnings season, which we're going to talk more about in just a second with our next guest, you think earnings season will justify that 17.3 times multiple? Uh, well, so, so this is the big question. The market is betting on a V-shaped recovery for earnings, right? So last year, earnings grew 22 percent. It peaked in the third quarter at 25 percent. The first quarter was about 0.6 percent with the expectation that the second half of this year would be this big boomerang. Um, but so far, the second quarter is following in the footsteps of the first quarter. And now, even though after one week of earnings, which is not very much, only 22 companies have reported, but you're already seeing that typical bounce, but it's coming at the expense of the third quarter, which that estimate just got lowered by 100 basis points in one week. And so the risk is that this V-shaped recovery in earnings becomes an L or it just gets pushed out further as, you know, worries about tariffs, uh, et cetera, start to weigh on, on you know, the behavior of, of these companies that are reporting. Um, and that, that V will not quite materialize in the way the market's expecting. And, that, and if that happens, 17.3, mm -hmm. you know, it's not the highest PE ever, but it is maybe a little bit higher than it should be.